What's up? I'm Grizz. Welcome to episode four, Link Click. Progressing through our first real arc here, which is really cool. And I'm excited to kind of see how we go. I'm wondering if we're going to end it here through two. So we're going to do both the thing with the mom and the girl this episode, or if we're going to venture that into episode five, and then we're just going to do one per. Uh, that'd be interesting. Also to see exactly how timelines and things kind of get affected, specifically based on us winning the game now instead of losing. Feels like there could be drastic shifts and changes here. So I'm excited to see how that's going to kind of go. If you like it, all the like and subscribe to me a lot to me. Feel free to stick around for the discussion. Leave any comments though about this episode or the series. Let's go into episode four. Mm. Yep. So we're fucked big time. Oh. I might be understanding that wrong, but I'm thinking that means as long as we still lose this game, nothing changes, but the shot ends up hitting, so we win, so shit changes. And it gets regretted. <laughs> we won! And everybody's happy, but won. <laughs> I'm really nervous, bro. Uh, you realize what happened? So he wasn't trying to win that when he made that pass, huh? History has changed. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This could get really bad then. I mean, I knew it changed, but... Fuck, could he be trapped at some point here? Sorry for what we just won. Fuck. Okay, interesting. So that one event changes everything. Okay, never mind. He's here. Okay, and we also exit by clapping our hands, it appears. That's the question I've been wondering how exactly he gets out if he has to stay for a certain time frame. So it appears that can happen. <laughs> yeah, try to make you understand this shit can be bad. Oh, no. It didn't matter. It doesn't matter if we lost the game then. Damn, so they stressed us for no fucking reason. Uh, and he just gives them hope to continue though. Wait, he didn't end up telling them before. He just, when they lost the game, they were just under the impression it was over as a result. Yeah, just let them play. Let them enjoy themselves, have their time. Okay, cool. So the, the, the node that they were talking about wasn't specifically the loss of the game. It was the, no matter what, the hall still wasn't going to be saved. And they didn't change the outcome if the hall is saved or not. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> On to the confession <laughs> after this point. <laughs> is this where we just tell them whatever though? We have to say some words we didn't get to before? Okay, yeah. So that is what we're doing here. Cool. <laughs> Way better than I expected. Every time they said Cap, I kept thinking that they were like, say like he was lying or something, not Captain. <laughs> My brain is so gone. <laughs> what did you tell him? I don't get the no. Made him happy though. <laughs> oh, no. They're all connecting here. <laughs> Who are you looking at? This is our first love and she doesn't even know us? Oh, oh, okay, there she does. <laughs> A little bit of bolt. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, wait, a woman's heart. Learn how to dunk. <laughs> do it. Get consent, bro. Get consent. <laughs> nice. Very pretty backgrounds. My man's W wing man, bro. Just giving away his sister like that, though. I wonder if that's what he told him on the bike. He like mentioned something about like, yo, I'm into her, you know, and that's what he regretted. Maybe like going behind his back or something and nobody noticed. I don't know. Ah. An interesting way to do this, like not letting you in on what they're saying and just leaving it to imagination in a way. And it seems to be all the right things, probably because he ran through it so many fucking times in his mind. What did you promise that you'll be like waiting for her when she comes back or something? I guess that was quick. All right, so we're going to do the mom this episode, probably. Nothing strange. Mm -hmm. And in that situation, it was her probably leaving or just Dilly saying this, that she was going and that happened. He didn't prevent that in any sort of way. Unless I'm understanding this wrong, and the note is literally just what happens by the end of all three of these, but I don't think that's the case. And now we got the fight with the mom. <laughs> Shit, I wouldn't come home if you were yelling at me all the time. <laughs> He's like, I really gotta get into a fucking fight. Ugh. Tearing the families apart. Um, so he wants to leave her. Mm. And then she drives him away in a way. Yeah. Right. Tabloid reporter. Interesting. Interesting how we got into this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> she feels right, 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 right. This one, I don't even have a, a clue as to what he could have said. That changed everything. Just a future promise that he'll do everything in his power to kind of not leave her alone or something. I don't know. Unless she's laughing, so I don't think so. No idea. Hello, Something happened to him. 
Uh-oh. 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 We're putting him in a lot of situations regarding family over the last few. He's just in fear of what happened then. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Ah, that's okay. No, bro, no. So he's trying to stop this shit from happening, but it's gonna happen regardless. No. Yeah. So, wow, interesting. This shit is so good. That is such a excellent way to kind of pull it out from under us of everything that I was kind of wondering this entire time. I was trying to make it make sense in my head exactly what this, this crossroads that we were going to kind of have to come up to, assuming it was something that occurred in every single timeline or not every timeline, but every story in which we were trying to connect with the three different people that we had. And assuming that the outcome of that needed to stay the same. So just the basketball game, it didn't matter if we won or lost. While we still should have lost just to keep things as you know normal as possible, it wouldn't really affect anything because the outcome is not going to matter because we're still going to lose the facility and everything that we have at the end of the day. It's not going to matter. Same thing, we meet the girl, we talk to her, she's still going to go away at the end of the day. Things aren't going to change regardless, so it doesn't matter. Same thing with the mom. You're still going to end up fighting. You're still going to end up whatever's going to happen to her afterwards is going to happen regardless. Like all this stuff doesn't really matter unless you just change the course of it all completely. But the problem with that is that's that was where my thinking was at the whole time. Then they decide to say, nah, fuck you. It actually wasn't going to make any It wasn't going to work the whole time. And the big thing that you're going to have to look out for was because all these people were going to fucking die. So he's only here because he wants to say things. Hey, that are like last like things that he really wishes that he could have said that he never had the opportunity to say to these people before they passed, which was something I thought about could have happened before. I said it in the episode three video uh, during the discussion, specifically when we were talking about the mom and what that situation could be. And I thought it was something where maybe she passed and maybe he said something they had an argument and that was like the last thing that he was able to say to her and then he felt like shit afterwards because he's like the last time i got to see it the last time i said something was right before then well we find out it's a very similar thing at the end of the day so he probably thought all this stuff over in his head over these years many times and was like what could i do what could i have done differently I'm not saying that he could have changed anything because he knows the outcome of this earthquake that's going to occur and take all these lives wasn't going to matter at the end of the day, right? He knew this was going to occur, or I guess he knows now that this was going to occur regardless. So it didn't matter what he said because they weren't going to save them. They were going to be saved at the end of the day, but he just has regrets about how he went about it, uh, wanting to give them reassurance maybe at the end of the day, wanting to make the captain feel good, somebody who's very important in his life and he wants to kind of thank him for everything, right? Wanting to set up something or at least give the girl that he's into hope in a way, wanting to, that he'll be able to go visit or they'll be able to meet up or he'll be waiting like whenever she came back or something along those lines, right? He wanted to give these people some sort of faith, some sort of hope, something else that he can also reach out to and give them and be like, like, this was a, a positive interaction. This was a, a good way for me to have my last moments with this person, unfortunately, right? Not that he wants it to be like that, but you don't want to have to look back and regret the things that you ended up saying or how you left things. You want to leave things without any regrets. And he does an excellent job of being able to go back and try and do this. It's a really, really fucky situation, though, to be able to do something like this. And it takes a lot, especially mentally, when you start realizing what's going on uh, from buddy who is entering in the photos here. 
it takes a lot for him to do. And even having to have all the information uh, with the white hair guy, it's kind of hard for them to kind of take this on. But regardless, to put us in a situation here where at the end of the day, everything's not going to matter. Uh, so no matter, that's why he was so confident in telling him all along, it literally wouldn't matter what he was doing in that, you know, you don't want to fuck around and change things too much. He taught him a lesson early on by being quiet with him and not saying anything after the thing happened with the game but also letting him know things haven't changed and i always wondered i was like how can he be so sure things aren't going to change well it makes enough sense now and it's really good way to kind of do it they've left us the last few episodes or these two now perfectly on like cliffhangers that you're like dude what the fuck is about to happen and it makes you really want to get into it and really want to see even if we do end up changing things things might change at some point but they're not going to be like anything too drastic but death is the one thing that you can't cross you cannot redo that you cannot change that in any sort of way because if you do and you change that timeline that past in this sort of way it could really fuck things up with this one person still being alive at these, these present points it could mean the existence of other people are completely gone it could mean just the relationships and stuff between certain people are gone and it would really fuck things up similar to how we saw earlier on when the way here guy wasn't giving us any information and he it was almost like he disappeared because we fucked something up i think that's more so the along the lines he's going like dude we can really mess things up if if we start playing around with lives and doing stuff like this and we really can't do that which is a, a excellent way to, for them to kind of put it in for you to know we cannot cross this barrier this is as far as we can go i also liked how we related it to buddy's past as well him being able to remember the gear in the day and starting to clue in on what the fuck's happening here and relating it to himself and his loss of his parents uh through the same tragedy and understanding that they're never going to come back and it also can build emotional bonds uh, between us and the other girl that we work with of him being able to see the relationship that the two of them have had uh, and how he found comfort in her like over these years uh, and she was the one that he ran to in this situation right him screaming out wondering where the parents are and it's a reoccurring thing that we've seen i've wondered before early a couple episodes ago if maybe something within this business got kind of fucky uh because of everything that went down and like this was something else that maybe like his parents did or maybe the his, the guy that he's working with right now has done before right and it caused something to happen and they fucked up like with deaths and stuff and the parents ended up dying or something and that's where we were going with that uh because we specifically touched on that in the first episode with him reflecting and thinking back on the opportunities that he wasn't going to be able to have anymore with his family but now it kind of makes a bit more sense that's not the case at all which is good to know it's very reassuring that we're not gonna have to deal with something like that but I think we're the most important thing here that we're going to have to be posed with going into this next episode, specifically how they handle it, but how each of the main two are going to react when things occur here, because the black hair guy does not have any intention right now of getting out of this photo. It appears he does not have any, any intentions of that. And he's trying to drastically change things. Maybe he won't, maybe he will restrain himself and really realize I can't fucking do anything. But the way it ended there, it seems like he really is intent on trying to think that he can do something. So if he tries to go out of his way, we're going to cause some sort of rift by the end of this. And these two are not going to be on good terms anymore and realize this shit's getting really bad. And we shouldn't completely just having different ideas about the way that we approach things and one, not listening to the other and everything and we could really cause a massive conflict similar to something that we saw in uh, episode two between the, the two girls and them going on different paths based on the way that they kind of perceived and wanted to do things i'd be interested to see kind of how we we approach all that we opened the episode specifically talking about the node and everything about how we can't rewrite certain things but can only rewrite it to a certain point as long as we don't pass this point and as long as the results of this this major key thing still occur it doesn't really matter at the end of the day but he starts panicking very heavy here uh, because he's not responding to him about exactly what his next step is or what he's supposed to do and then we pan over and see his room and he's absolutely not there and you're like what the fuck happens here <laughs> right and we're like oh shit he changed it so drastically that they're not even in business together but he still found himself stuck inside this body somehow which is absolutely crazy uh but then we end up finding out he was just literally looking for the notes for what he needs to say uh, in these situations now <laughs> which is really fucked but also it could have been used that he was teaching him a lesson this entire time and he was like dude this is the extent of what can happen if we keep fucking around so that's why we can't do this also we saw I believe this is the first time too we saw it. they enter in when they they touch hands with each other by right? like clapping them together with each other but it also appears that if he claps while well inside the photo he comes out of it so it seems like before I was questioning does he have to wait the full like length 
the, the photo length that he's in, or can he get out of it at any point he wants? Like what exactly it is. And it appears he can kind of come and go as he pleases. We find out here though, the first obstacle of, oh, wow, we saved the day, but things are going to change drastically because of this. No, they're not because regardless, this, the thing wasn't getting saved. It didn't really matter, but let everybody else kind of believe it. Leave them on high hopes of being excited about the things that they've kind of done and the chances that they might have while well, they're really not. While well, the teacher is like, maybe I should tell them though and kind of bring their spirit down a little bit. Let them know I lied to them all along. Maybe you shouldn't. Maybe you should just let them kind of get a little of hope and be excited about something for a while get a really pretty just ride kind of going up the hill talking with this guy the great backgrounds and everything that they're doing props to him also for being able to ride this heavy ass dude up a bike while his knees fall fucked up but also he's exhausted from playing basketball this time good for him anyways here we finally get him to finally say his final words the things that he he originally went back for this is obstacle number one of what we were trying to do and he's able to say the things in which that he hasn't been able to do before we're able to start seeing something here where they they mute the audio essentially here you can see the characters are speaking you can see they're reacting to what's being said but we don't get to see it i take this a few different ways one you're just supposed to figure it out on your own because why wouldn't you right you don't need to know exactly what was said but that also goes into number two you don't need to know what they said it's a private matter it's not something that you actually need to fully understand what he wanted to go back and what he really meant to say and it's something that you can kind of put into the bigger picture once you kind of know how this ends and understand, oh, we were specifically not letting you see this because it's his moment. It's his final moment in a way of saying the things that he wasn't able to, to somebody that he lost, right? Being able to say something to a loved one before they pass, being able to put that into whatever perspective that you have to hear and give him that opportunity that he'll never actually have again and be able to do this. It really, really special way, I feel like, for them to kind of do this. But it also could have just been as simple as they want you to figure out what the hell he's saying. <laughs> Anyways, it doesn't really matter what he says. We end up meeting the next obstacle, number two, the girl that he ends up liking. He finds out it seems like she likes him too. They're on pretty good, you know, terms here and everything. Uh, we move along, we get some photos, some fun time, just us kind of talking as well. And then we go into the next moment where she find out that she's going to live with like her half dad or something, and she's going to be able to be in the city now, and she's going to have to study and do everything from there. So she's going to be leaving for a while. So he's not going to get any opportunities to see her anymore. Here, another one, another silent confession in a way. Doesn't really matter matter what he says because at the end of the day it's not going to matter because she's going to be gone but at the same time we can assume that he probably said something along the lines of like he'll visit her or he'll be here when she returns or he'll he wants to come with her or something along those lines that kind of make her happy hence her saying oh you're going to keep this promise or something and also making that promise really fucking sucks when you kind of know how this thing turns out really beautiful just once again with everything that they're doing i i love the way that these are presented able to make our promise we're able to move on to finally step number three where we get into our argument with our mom or it's pretty obvious early on the mom kind of has regrets of people not wanting her around leaving her in a way the dad never being around now the son's trying to leave her she's going to have nothing left these people that she cares for so much or think she did so much for or love so much completely out of her life and she feels like she's not at fault at all for this but he keeps trying to preach though that he wants to go to the city and do all this which basically builds it up more and more and the mom starts losing her mind also him being in the photo business and stuff i wonder if that has any relation or if that really doesn't matter and she was just kind of bringing that up i just thought that was really interesting it causes her to completely break down though and have to cry and it really sucks him having to be put in this position especially as we know somebody who has lost his family uh, and isn't able to have these opportunities as well kind of wants to treasure this stuff as much as he can like he did in the first episode and now having to kind of get into an argument in a way with this girl is really not something that you could tell that he wants to do and he even keeps saying that he doesn't want to ended up having to do it though was able to finally deliver some good words to her this is the one that i don't even have a clue as to what he said it kind of makes her break down like laughing by the end of it and just smiling and I, I really am wondering exactly what he said but once again it doesn't matter at the end of the day but yeah that really really interesting to what he could have done and this is where we end up finding here after he stays a little longer than he probably should have and he should have gotten out of it beforehand because this would have all not ended up happening here of him not having to find out what occurs afterwards this is why in the first time he was like dude you're better off not even knowing or paying attention to what occurred this is another reason why you're better off not knowing the exact day that we're on the things that we're doing, right? Because once you do, shit could really start flaring up here. He starts having flashbacks here. This is where we end up finding out the relation between these two and exactly how they first kind of met. They're not how they first met, but this is like the earliest introduction that we're kind of getting between them two and finding out that as he finds out, this is the date right around when this earthquake is going to occur. It's going to kill 
thousands, hundreds of thousands of people, probably. I don't actually know. I'm assuming this was also a real event that occurred. So if that is the case, I'll look into that, I guess, later, just because I am curious. But <laughs> regardless, able to relate this in his own life of realize, shit, this is why I'm here. I'm here to say these things for a last time to all these people because they're going to be gone. And him be able to relate this and connect it back to this is when I lost my parents and the people that I cared about, you know, and wondering where they are. Are they going to be OK? Are they alive? You know, they're going to come back. Right. Really difficult shit for him to do. And he starts panicking really, really heavy, which ultimately results in him kind of just going outside and realizing, fuck, I got to do something. But at the same time, you can't do anything. There's nothing that can be done. But also, if you do try and warn people or save people, that's a line we can't cross. We talked about before, you, you can't cross these certain things that occur. And death is not one of those exceptions. You cannot cross death. If you alter that in any sort of way, it can result in catastrophic things occurring. I think this also tells so much about why what happened in episode one with him changing the things that happened in the future didn't actually end up mattering because regardless, the girl was going to die either way, right? But at the end of the day, just the only thing that changed was the means in which she died. So the end result still stayed the same. So it didn't matter even though he did change it. It still didn't matter. This is another one of those situations though. That you cross that now, you know these people are going to die. So it doesn't matter if they're still going to die regardless here in this situation. Problems gonna end up becoming if you cause them to not die, we're gonna have some fucking problems. And people might not exist anymore. People's relationships might not exist and the path that they're on, and it could cause real big issues. And I wonder if something like that ever gets crossed. If we're in one of these these photos while this is happening, what exactly happens to our guys? Do he just immediately get snapped out of it and then put into wherever he would have wound up? Does he get stuck in this person's body and have to live this out? That's something I'm just rather curious about. And we end there though, with one of them reaching out and saying, please don't do anything. And the other one's like, fuck, I need to do something. Ugh, how they're going to handle that. I really don't know. I really don't think he's going to do anything. I think he's going to understand that he might go and like say some final things to them, almost things that he wishes he could have said to his own parents. And I think that would be more of an appropriate way to go. And I hope he has enough restraint to kind of hold them back. Lord knows what the fuck they're going to end up doing. I'm also kind of nervous just the relationship between the two if he does something uh, that's going to occur when he comes out and be like kind of rocky for them kind of wanting to go on different paths or approaching things and him not listening when he's inside these photos and trying to take things and do things on his own could really become come some issues and they might not want to work together at this point or not saying that but the black hair guy might not want to do this anymore as well because a mental toll of everything that's happening here and these memories and these traumatizing things that are going to continue to happen to him really can pile up and really cause some issues that's all for me though absolutely love this so much this is fantastic for through and it's <laughs> phenomenal so far so i'm very happy that i'm doing this uh please leave any comments about this episode or this series i would love to just hear what you have to say and talk about it also as i said before in the first one i'm recording these kind of ahead so i'm probably multiple episodes ahead by the time you end up seeing this sorry but it's the only way i can kind of do this while getting them all uploaded and getting them all out for season two i'm trying to do what i can <laughs> Yeah, there's that. Uh, anyways, if you liked it all, though, hit the like and subscribe. It means a lot to me. Feel free to check out the other videos on the channel. Leave any comments about this sort of series. I'll see you next time, though, for episode five. You guys have a good one. See you.